a number of her statements are so anti-Israel and are so anti-Semitic as to be terrifying. But she was elected from a district largely Muslim, largely immigrants, largely from the Middle East that voted as a bloc, and she was elected fair and square. But now, for two years, she's going to be a thorn in the side. Not a secret spy, right? She's out. Yeah. She's in public, and she's not <laughs> keeping it a secret. In yep. fact, she's going to have dress-up day in January to show you exactly where her allegiance is. Can you imagine, Jermaine, what a circus it would be if 435 members of Congress in the House and 100 members of the Senate showed up in their native costumes, right, from wherever they family came from at one time in the past to show where their allegiance was. Oh my God, the disintegration yeah. of decorum and uh, agreement and the ability to be civil with one another would break down instantly. You'd have people from every country on earth with all those costumes, mm -hmm. with all those traditions, and with all those self-identifications, and it would be a freaking zoo. Yeah, it, it would be a zoo. And let me tell you, um, you can't have any cooperation with uh, that type of uh, thought process with people doing that type of jazz here. And there's a last thing here I want to show you. And it's another Breitbart article. And it says Rashid Talib will wear Palestinian garb for congressional swearing in, just like you were speaking about. You know, um, we cannot allow this. And let me go ahead and show uh let me go ahead and show the people here um how it looks like because this type of uh garb here will not look right um first of second of all and it's we're not in uh palestine we're not in that area we are in the u.s and uh people should need to keep that tradition and that decorum so that we can respect the office and our government um that's one thing that is missing and it seems like uh, liberals, what they will do is they'll say that if she doesn't, if she's not allowed to wear it, that means that uh, people are being racist. This is what they're going to say. And they will win with that because people are weak nowadays, Barry, let me tell you. You can call anybody a racist and get them to do anything to avoid that term. It's a mm -hmm. horrible, horrible label. And nobody wants to be stuck with it, Jermaine. It's the truth. Yep, nobody does, and um, this is the main reason why I, I do this show, so that we can bring out the truth, so that we can get people to really get all the uh, information for them to decide, and for them to really stand up for what is right, and I believe that is what's missing. Now, Ilhan Omar uh, is in the news, and she's another... Muslim women, a woman that uh, got voted into Congress in my own uh, beautiful state. I can't even say it's beautiful anymore, Barry. You know, um, I'm telling you, it is dangerous around here. Uh, you don't see too many conservatives. If you do, um, they're in the iron range. They're way out, let me tell you, in the country. You, you come around where I'm from, you know, you wear this hat, and people see you driving. You, you better watch out. And this woman here, she is doing the same exact thing as uh, Rashidi Talib. You know, um, they are not for ICE. They're not for this country. Um, they're for an open border, you know, and they run the same crap. I'm a woman. I'm a Muslim woman. I'm a personal. You know, you, you get what I'm saying? The whole victim statements. Um, it, it's just terrible and the reason why she's in the news Barry is because she put out basically a meme um, showing Vice President uh, Pence looking like he's sleeping uh, during the little press conference between uh, President Trump, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and she put a little caption there mocking his religion saying Jesus take the will let me go ahead and and show the crowd. This is the picture that got a lot of people mad. And 
to me, this is a very disrespectful picture, knowing what she believes and uh, knowing her background. What do you think about uh, this type of garbage here? I can tell you, Jermaine, that I've spent time with the vice president. He is a wonderful man. Uh, of wonderful values. I, I truly liked him as a human being, and I like um, a vast majority of what he stands for. He is a religious man, and he is a religious Christian. And to make fun of the fact that he is Christian is an abomination. Mm -hmm. It is disgusting, and I should add, very, very un-American. We, as Americans, don't make fun of anybody's belief. We have freedom of religion, meaning whatever you believe, as long as you're not hurting me, is totally okay and protected under the Constitution. And how someone that is about to take the oath, based on the Constitution, can start off with making fun of a Christian who happens to be the second most powerful, important person in the United States of America is disgusting. And you know what really bothers me more than that? No public outcry. Yeah. No 10,000 protests on Twitter. No shutdown of her Twitter account. No banning of her Twitter account. Why? Because it seems to be okay to bash religion unless it's Islam. That scares the heck out of me. Because what's going to happen when she really has power and she just doesn't have the microphone, as you say, she's going to be your representative mm -hmm. in Congress, right? And I take it that you believe that your religion is important to you. And oh, yeah. to her, your religion sounds stupid and has no respect worthy of her giving you respect. I hope that disgusts you. I assume it should discuss all of your viewers. I want to add one more thought. I've done a number of videos on this, and they're at the Vineberry website. We've talked about Thomas Jefferson. He was a scholar, maybe the smartest man that was ever in government. He wrote the Declaration of Independence. I mean, he's that kind of guy. And America is what it is largely in the beginning because of Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson said in his diaries that the Muslims that wanted or were going to come to America would not be able to be Americans unless they gave up their book because their book, the Quran, would not allow them the freedoms that the American Constitution was going to give people especially regarding religion. In other words, you can't have both. You're either a Muslim or you're an American because if you're a Muslim and you believe it and you follow it in case of conflict, America loses, Islam wins, or you, get this, could possibly, in certain circumstances, be put to death by your fellow believers. Jefferson knew it read his writings or just go watch our video we'll give you all the citations and it's all in the Quran and it's never been changed it's still there since uh, well 600 I guess it's been there for 1500 years I really urge your viewers to read it and that's why your new congresswoman can say the things she says because she believes it you know Barry imagine this imagine if somebody put out let's say if I put out I got a uh pretty sizable um, Twitter account. Imagine if I went and put out, you know, uh, Ilhan Omar's picture, you know, make, you know, in a nefarious position, right? She's sleeping or she's eating a piece of uh, chicken or pork, you know, something, right? And then I put Mohammed take the wheel. What do you think will happen to me, Barry? I'll, I'll, my friend, I will tell you exactly. If you put a picture of the prophet, you hold on to your hat. You ready? Mm hmm. We'll be marked for death. Man, I'm not kidding. That's it's happened serious. Before. Look what happened in France with mm -hmm. the Charlie Hebdo murders. All those people that were slaughtered in France 
were slaughtered because they dared to put a picture of Mohammed in the paper. It's happened all over the world. It's called defaming the prophet. If you were to do that, you, Germain, would be marked for death. That's, it's not a joke. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, I don't know. That's what would happen. And yet, going the other way, all of the progressives and liberals in America think, well, she's expressing her opinion. Isn't that great? Isn't it wonderful that in America you can make fun of the vice president being a Christian? And to them, that's a good thing. That shows how liberal we are. That shows how open-minded we are. And that also shows how stupid we are. Because if you can't respect someone's personal beliefs, how are you gonna work with them? Yeah. How are you gonna sit down and, and negotiate? How are you gonna pass laws for the good of the Christian majority in this country if you have no respect for Christians? Seriously, it's a question. I don't know the answer. You know, um, and Barry, you're, you're absolutely right with your assessment.